<laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Welcome back to Handmade. I'm a pumpkin. <laughs> With a beard. <laughs> hey, Miles. How do you like your costume? He wants to eat it. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Handmade. I'm Liz. And it is officially spooky season, which means it is officially pumpkin carving season. I love a good jack-o'-lantern, and I also like to display them for what is probably longer than socially acceptable, so I'm always on the hunt for new pumpkin preservation methods. People of the internet have recommended everything from acrylic spray, to bleach, to hairspray, petroleum jelly, um, I've seen commercial options, but which one reigns supreme? Well, that's what I hope to find out today. I'm going to carve a whole bunch of pumpkins and test five different preservation methods to see which one works the best. And I'm also going to share some general tips to make your pumpkin last longer along the way. So let's get started. Before we start carving, let's talk about pumpkin selection. You want the freshest pumpkins you can find for the longest life, so I'd recommend checking out a local farm or farm store. Avoid buying pumpkins with soft spots or blemishes. Once you're back home with your pumpkin, clean it up with an antifungal cleaner or bleach water. I'm using a bathroom cleaner with bleach, which works great for this. This will keep any bacteria on the outside from getting inside. This next tip might be a little controversial, but for a longer life, try cutting the bottom of your pumpkin instead of the top. And unlike the top cut, you don't need to save the cutout piece. I think the pumpkins get better airflow without it. Now for everyone's least favorite part of pumpkin carving, cleaning out the inside. It's super important to get every last bit of pulp and seeds to prolong the life of your pumpkin. To speed up this process, I'm using a hand mixer with one beater to break out the stubborn pulp. You can also use a drill fitted with one beater for this, but I think the lower power of the mixer works a bit better. Now just scoop out all the pulp and seeds. I'm using a metal spoon for this. And this is what you're looking for. Don't throw away those seeds, roast them. They are so good. See how we do it over on the HGTV Handmade TikTok, which we'll link to in the description below. Now let's talk pumpkin carving. For the longest life, less detailed designs work the best. I'm doing a classic jack-o'-lantern look here. Intricate patterns with thin pumpkin sections just decay more quickly, so plan accordingly. Here's the final design. When you're ready to light it up, opt for an LED candle. Not only is it safer than a real flame, it will also be kinder to your carved pumpkin. This pumpkin is going to serve as my control for the preservation experiment, so it's ready to go. But first, I have a lot of pumpkins to prep. Is pumpkin elbow a thing? Okay, now on to the preservation methods. My strategy is to choose methods that will combat the two major enemies to jack-o'-lantern health, mold and decay. That brings me to our first method, a bleach water soak. Bleach kills mold spores on surfaces, and it's also the most touted preservation method I found. I'm filling a tub with water and adding one tablespoon of bleach per gallon of water. Then just submerge the pumpkin for about an hour, rotating every few minutes to cover all sides. Dry it off and it's ready to display. On to method two, a salt water soak. Salt is often used as a food preservative, so I wanted to see how it would work on a pumpkin. It's also safe for kids, pets, and wild animals. It's most effective as a mold preventative when dissolved in water, so I'm using one half cup of salt per gallon of water here. Just like the bleach, I'll submerge this for an hour in the salt water, and then I'll dry it off completely to display. Method three is baking soda. Baking soda not only kills black mold, it also absorbs moisture that attracts mold. Like salt, it's also kid and pet friendly. To test out the baking soda, I'm combining two tablespoons baking soda with two cups of water, and then transferring that into a spray bottle. Then I'll spray the pumpkins with this each day, dumping out any extra water. For the next method, I'm using tea tree oil, which is a natural fungicide. This essential oil not only deters mold, it also repels pests. Tea tree oil can be toxic to pets though, so keep your pumpkin out of reach if you have a curious companion. I'm using about one teaspoon of tea tree oil dissolved in two cups of water, and I'll spray this on the pumpkin every day just like the baking soda. 
for our final method, vinegar. Vinegar is mild enough to be kid and pet friendly, but strong enough to kill about 82% of mold species. You didn't know that this was going to be a video all about mold, did you? So I'm using undiluted white vinegar to give this method the best possible chance of success. And like the previous sprays, I'll apply it to the pumpkin every day. Okay, the pumpkins are carved, the preservation potions are mixed, and the scene is set. Now we wait. All right, so we're on day five with these pumpkins. Let's see where they're at. All right, here's all of our pumpkins, day five. Here's our bleach buddy. And he's looking pretty fresh still. Looks not any mold inside. This is salt. Looks pretty good also. I don't see any mold. These are the two I was definitely expecting to do pretty well. Then here we have baking soda. Looks pretty good from the outside. The inside though is starting to get a little soft, especially around the cut edges. Tea treat oil here. The cut edges still feel really fresh. We are seeing a little bit of mold on the inside. It's like, get you a mold close up here. Nice, huh? All right, vinegar here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it has a ton of flies on it and people say you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, but I don't know. I don't think that's true. This is pretty gross. And then we have our control here. So it's actually looking pretty good still in terms of the integrity of the pumpkin, but it also has a lot of flies and some mold on the inside. Day five, day five, day five. All right, here we are, day nine. I am shocked that the pumpkins have made it this far, but here we are. So let's check in and see how they're doing. Mr. Bleach, going strong. Let's look at the inside. No mold in the bleach one. It's starting to cave in a bit, but it still looks good. And the longer it sits, the more white the cut edges get. There is no mold on the cut edges as well. So that's definitely a win. Definitely starting to see some wear and tear though. Next we have salt solution, starting to look very spooky and lots of mold on the inside. I'm pretty grossed out to be honest to have any of these still sitting around. Probably would have called it if it wasn't for this mostly scientific experiment. So really thinking of you guys right now. Okay, this one is interesting, baking soda. So the cut edges have definitely seen better days, but we have absolutely no mold on the inside of our baking soda pumpkin. So this does seem like a really great mold preventative. Okay, next up we have our, what is this one? Tea tree oil. Tea tree oil. So. The cut edges stay, are staying really fresh. They look nice, but we do have a bit of mold on the inside. I know you guys are wanting those mold close-ups and I'm here to deliver that, so. All right, so that's disgusting. But again, on the outside, he's looking pretty fresh, right Jack? All right, next up. 
the vinegar pumpkin, aka the bane of my existence because it is still full of fruit flies. I cannot overstate how disgusting this is. There's just flies all over the place. When I spray with vinegar, some of them go away, but then more come. So this does not seem like a good option. And then last but not least, we have our control. So this one also has quite a bit of mold and a lot of flies. It also smells bad, which, you know, you should be glad you don't have smell of vision but it's not doing super hot. So I think a preservation method does help. Day nine. Like, will these make it all the way to Halloween? Maybe. I don't think we have until Halloween to film this video. So it's day 12, and as you can see, these pumpkins have definitely seen better days. So I'm going to go through and rank the preservation methods I tried from worst to best, starting with this guy. This is the vinegar pumpkin, and while the outside looks reasonably well preserved, this method just attracted so many fruit flies that this is infested, and that's definitely not what we want in a jack-o'-lantern. So. Goodbye. Aww. From there, I think the next worst method is the control. So this is the one that we just did the basics to, nothing extra. Um, and it looks okay. It has quite a few fruit flies. It smells pretty bad, but all in all, it wasn't the worst. I'm looking at you, vinegar. So next up, we have the salt solution. Well, it seemed like it was working well at first. It really didn't preserve either the face of the pumpkin or the inside. There's a lot of mold. There's actually multiple kinds of mold on the salt pumpkin. So unfortunately, not a great fit. Moving right along, the next best option is our tea tree oil friend. Okay, so the good about tea tree oil is that it really preserved the cut edges of this pumpkin well. The bad is that even though it is a mold preventative, um, the inside of this pumpkin did get a bit moldy. So it did half of what it needed to do, but not the other half. I would honestly say that baking soda and bleach are tied for first, and I'm going to tell you why. So obviously bleach is pretty straightforward. We made bleach water, soaked it for an hour, and then just let it do its thing. Um, and that preserved the pumpkin really well. The cut edges stayed dry. It didn't grow much mold, although it does have a little bit of mold on the inside. Um, but you, as you can see, um, the face of the pumpkin did degrade a little. And, you know, bleach is a little more toxic to deal with than some of our other methods. I think baking soda was really the sleeper hit of this whole experiment. Well, the front of the pumpkin does look a little rough. There was no mold whatsoever on the inside of the pumpkin this whole time. So that's definitely a win. The point of this experiment was really to isolate each method to see how it performed independently. Now that I have all of this information, my preferred pumpkin preservation method is going to be the bleach water soak and then a spray that has a mix of baking soda and tea tree oil. And I'll leave a recipe for that in the description down below just so you guys can try the same thing. Um, but I think that that would give you a great combination of um, overall preservation and then keeping mold away and keeping cut edges fresh. I don't think that these pumpkins are going to make it all the way to Halloween, but I hope these tips help extend the life of your pumpkin. Let me know in a comment below, have you tried other pumpkin preservations and how do they work? I'd love to know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.